Welcome to Patrick Lamb Tries Vlogging. Let's see how this goes. So I thought I would do this recording of a brief talk every week before next week's um, papers to give some context on why I chose these papers and why they're important. But first I wanted to address some of the points I saw in the surveys about um, the logistics for the course. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was that somebody had said that they tended to get better marks in more synchronous classes uh, with asynchronous components. And I just wanted to point out that for graduate seminar classes, you should not worry about marks. You'll, you'll do fine as long as you do the work. So why empirical studies? I've had experiences, unpleasant experiences with doing work and finding out that the aesthetic analysis that you invented doesn't actually apply to things that you care about or things that exist in the world. And so now I'm like, hmm, before we start doing static analysis, let's try to find cases where it actually applies. I'll also note that in the past 10 years, we've seen a lot of empirical studies work actually been published and there's conference MSR, which has had bigger and bigger uh, test sets as part of its papers. Um, finding software repositories that they that they find. Um, I'd also like to point out that just counting things doesn't make for a good paper. There has to be some sort of story about why the things that you're counting are important. Um, you can not just publish a paper and say, this is what we found. You also have to say, so what? Why? This is why you care about what, you, what we found. Okay, so first of all, there's this paper about Java logging and so why logging? Logging is this thing, you know, everyone does it. I guess it's kind of nice to know, well, what is everyone doing when they do logging? How do they do the logging? Do they have custom logging or do they have uh, their own logging? And so that paper goes and surveys a fairly large number of Java programs to see what logging they have and find some surprising results. They were surprising to me and we'll find out about those. The next three papers then are about Rust and unsafe Rust. And it was astounding to me that there were three papers published in top conferences about unsafe Rust. What's going on here? So we'll have some interesting, I'm sure, discussions of the strengths and weaknesses of these papers. I also wanted to point out that the, the Rust paper we're talking about this week happens to have used some of the key concepts that are going to occur in this course. Um, so the first concept I want to talk about is optimistic versus conservative and that's a key thing in static analysis. The point is that you cannot, because of the halting problem, tell what the program is exactly going to do. You're going to have to make some approximations. Um, the halting problem and also the problem of having input to the program which you don't know what it is. And so you can guess what the program is going to do. You are never going to be exactly right. There's also the other notions that are important, um, which I'll briefly say and maybe I'll write out more about them. The notion of a control flow graph um, links the statements in the program and how a particular statement may occur before another statement. Um, the notion of a call graph, which links functions in the program which are all other functions. And the notion of context sensitivity, which is when you actually look at what the program is doing statically, how you're going to estimate what happens at the beginning of a procedure. There's also the notion of work list algorithm, which is a key notion in static analysis. And it's an algorithm which has a list of work and then you pull things off the list and you add things to the list until you reach a fixed point. Okay, so that's what I have to say about our three papers. And I look forward to the discussion this week. See ya.